Hey guys, welcome to another part. And in this video, what we are going to do, we are first of all going to make our server. What we say, server file. In this video, we are only going to make one server file. That is going to be our index or JavaScript server file. We will not be touching backend server for a long time from now because we will be setting up our frontend stuff like that. But I just want to make this file, so we're gonna make it. What we're gonna say, we're gonna do first of all one second. Okay, well we are in Windows, we're gonna type new item index.javascript. It is going to create a new file with the name of index.js in here, and here we go. We're gonna open that file. In here, we are going to do a lot of stuff. So we're gonna close our terminal, we're gonna hit Ctrl plus B to hide that thing, and mostly concern concentrate on what we are going to do here. So first of all, we are going to define uh, most of our, of our dependencies that we uh, imported, that we actually installed. We're going to say constant app is going to be called the require express function. So what we are saying here, basically, you will just say, okay, constant express is equal to require express, and then below you will say constant app is equal to ex express, and then the function, right? All you say, just say express, and we will use something like express this mm, this you will say okay but there's a shortcut to this thing we will not be using any express as a we will not be using any express or json or express.url encoded as a middleware so we don't need express or we will we will not be also you know giving our uh, files as a static like express.static something like that because we're using next.js so what we are going to do only is say app is equal to require express and then we call the function right there it just give it this it just gives something to the app that what we are going going to going to give the app is just the express function now here we don't want to make another const because we already define a const we can just have a comma and you can define another variable which will automatically have the const written before it and you don't even have to write it that's the functionality of javascript what i'm going to write here i'm just going to say uh let's say body parser when you say body parser is going to be called the require body parser we're going to name it something like uh, camel case or pascal case whatever you say it okay we're going to say body parser require body parser dot json we only need the dot json function of the body parser because we only want to read the json requests we will not be sending any url encoded requests or any form data stuff like that so we don't have to deal with that thing okay Make sense? Good. Now here we're going to have make a define Morgan. We're gonna say Morgan is equal to require Morgan. And then we have to define a function. And this function we're gonna say dev. So basically we're getting the development uh function of Morgan because we only are going to use this in the development. And after the development we will just commit out the Morgan thing because we don't want it. And now after we're gonna have the dot env is going to be called the require dot env dot config. So basically dot config will actually set up your dot env dependency in your whole Node.js server in that whole folder. You don't even have to say dot env is called require dot env. You can just say require dot env dot config. But this is equal to makes it a little bit more you know clean. It doesn't make uh, it look bad. So yeah, that's a thing if you consider that a thing. Then we have cars. We're gonna say cars is going to be require cars, and here we need to define a function with some options. And the options goes like this. The first option we need to say is uh, what do we say? Okay, one second. The origin. Here in the origin, you can just define everything, like you accept a response, you know, a request from anywhere, from any site, or you can have you're going to be specific. What we're gonna do, we will mention here the link of our uh, front end, like a front end server that is next year server. Normally, we'll have localhost 3000, but we don't know if we have upload this thing or somewhere online. So, we're gonna say process.env.origin. Basically, what is it going to do? What is it? Course origin. So, we can define a variable with the name of course origin in our.env file. We're gonna do it right now. 
we're going to make a new file with the name of .env and here we're going to say course underscore origin is going to be equal to our localhost localhost 3000 that's uh, 3000 is the port of next.js by default and yeah that's for the origin in here we have to say question mark credentials true so basically it will allow you to read credentials of the you actually you know you actually allow you to set the credentials of the uh, front end guys of the next year's application basically that's about the course then we have mongoose okay require we need to get mongoose right there then we have the cookie parser it's called the require cookie parser function oh we can use another thing we can just use like you know cookie parse but uh, cookie parse function but the cookie parser is just a middleware we don't have to do anything else it is we want to put it as a middleware and it will do its thing right that's what I like okay and you should like that thing too because that's a cool thing so now here we will define a thing called this port we'll say port is by default going to be 3000 it's going to be process the env dot port. So what we are saying right now here, we're saying you get the port from process the env dot port because when you upload your code somewhere online on some shared servers or something like that, what is going to happen if they don't have that port three thousand available? They're going to assign a new port to your server, maybe port four thousand something like that. They will add a variable uh, in your environment folder environment file with the name of port. You don't have to you don't have to add this port variable by yourself if they are by themselves so we're just saying yeah that should be the current that should be the value of our port which is destructively we're just saying process.env okay we just say process.env the port okay if no no port was there basically there was nothing like port stuff like that alright then keep it value 3000 otherwise just keep that value I hope this is this should work. I have not done it before. I just got an idea we can do something like that, okay? Now we need to put all of these things middlewares into use. We're gonna say app use. Here we need to put all the middlewares. We'll put body parser, we'll put uh, Morgan, we'll put cars, we'll put cookie parser, we don't have to put we don't need to put dot me as I already told you. Here we'll say app listen on our port. And if I do node mon, I start my server. Yep, that's great. We don't get to see any error, and that's what I like. Here, it also gives a kind of like a callback function. We can say console. I can just say log. Okay, listening on port port and basically if I say node 1 listening on port 3000 right and that's good we're going to get rid of this callback function because we don't want to have any callback function so guys yeah that was it for this video we have not set up any database we have set up nothing okay I'm saying it by myself because we're gonna do that afterwards first we're gonna set up our whole front end and once we are no where once we know yep we are good to go then we will go into other things okay so I will see you in the next video Hope you're liking these videos so far. And uh, have a nice day. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, join the playlist if you have not already. And I will see you.